This is the video lecture for Understanding Project Management, a Practical Guide, Second Edition. And this is calculating the critical path. Now, this is an appendix related to Chapter 5, Schedule Planning. And in this video lecture, we will look at the process of calculating the critical path uh, systematically. And so let's, uh, let's go forward and we will look at how this is done. Now, first of all, some uh, conventions in terms of the network diagram. So here we see um, a, a activity, which is part of our, which will be part of a network diagram. And the convention is the activity name uh, is in the middle of the, of the rectangle. The duration is shown at the bottom, uh, centered at the bottom. Left upper corner is uh, a date or time called an early start. Now this is the earliest that the activity may start uh, given the dependencies defined in the network diagram. The upper right is the early finish. This is the earliest that a, a, an activity may finish given the, uh, the characteristics of the network diagram, that is the activities, durations, and dependencies. The late start is in the lower left corner. This is the latest that an activity may start, and late finish is the latest an activity may finish. Again, given the activities, the dependencies, and the durations that are present in the, in the network diagram. The total float that is calculated for each activity is placed in this position. So that's going to that's going to be our conventions that we use. So let's let's calculate. Let's go through the calculation process for this simple network diagram. This information is also contained in the appendix of the textbook, which goes through the the detailed calculations that is going to be done there. But what we can see here are five activities that have de dependencies between them and durations estimated for each one. What we're going to do first is what's called a forward pass. And that's starting with the, um, the first activity or activities that will start. And those are the ones without dependencies. So in this case is select vacation destination, has no predecessors before th that's causing it uh, to be, um, to not start right, right away. So uh, it is the initial activity that will, that will take place. So we start there and so the early start is the start of day one. And so it's got a one. Now there are, there is another um, uh, method of calcul calculating the critical path where uh, the first activity will start at time zero. Um, and that's a different way of calculating it, but this text uses starting at beginning of day one. Okay, so that's the early start for select vacation destination. And then we need to now calculate. What we're doing now is calculating and we're gonna flow through the network diagram and calculate in the forward pass, the early start and early finish of, of each activity. And the way you do that is as follows. To calculate the early finish for an activity, you take the early start, add the duration, and then subtract one off, subtract one. So in this case, we'll take day one, add two days and subtract one to get an early finish of two. So you should think of this as it's starting at the start of day one and ending at the end of day two. That's the way we, we do it. Now, we now need to jump, we follow the dependencies. So we can see that the successor to select vacation destination is apply for passport and book vacation. So now what we need to do is move over the or, and, and calculate the early start for each of these for these activities. Now to calculate the early start of succeeding activities, you add one to the early finish of the of the predecessor. And in this case, that will result in an early start of day three. In, in each of those activities. 
Okay, we now follow the process that we talked about before for each of these activities. We take the early start and the duration minus one. So that gives us an early finish of day 12 for apply for passport, day three for book vacation. Now notice we need to calculate the early start for pack for vacation. Again, we add one to the early finish. That gives us day four. Calculate the early finish. That gives us day four. Again, four plus one minus one is four. Now we have a, a situation now where we have more than one activity that is merging into depart for vacation. So the question is, which of these do we use? Do we use the 12 and add one? Or we do we add use the four, the early finish of four, which is on pack for vacation? Which one, which early finish are we going to use? Well, the rule is, is you take on a forward pass, you take the largest, the greatest early finish. So in this case, we would select the 12 because it is greater than four, add one, and that became, becomes the early start for depart for vacation. Now, again, we calculate the early finish using our previous methods. That's now 13. Okay, so we have now completed the um, forward pass of this network diagram. And we can now see the earliest this project uh, may finish, given the planning assumptions we've used is 13 days. Now, hopefully that's, that is, is apparent by looking at this network diagram, shouldn't be surprising. Okay, so now we're going to do something called the uh, backward pass. Okay, so we have the forward pass and the backward pass. And we now need to do a similar process. We do similar calculations um, to, to calculate the late finish and the late start, but we're now moving in effect from, whereas in the forward pass, we were moving from left to right. In this case, we're moving from right to left. We're going backwards through the network diagram. And so we need to, to start, we need to get our, our uh, uh, backward pass uh, started. And so where it starts is that the, uh, late finish is set to be equal to the early finish, right? So the latest, and if you think of that, that should be logical, where the latest that the um, uh, activity may finish is, is the same as the earliest, is that you're, you're not allowed to go past that, right? Because that's the, you know, we, we want the project to finish as early as possible. So the late finish of depart for vacation is, is end of day 13. Now, we're now going to reverse through and calculate the late start. Now, in this case, we take 13 minus the duration and then add one. Now, remember, we were doing the, the forward pass, we were subtracting one, but now everything's in reverse. So we take 13 minus one plus one, which gives us 13. Now, we now need to jump to our predecessors. We can see that there are two predecessors of, of depart for vacation. And again, it's, it's opposite to what we did in the, uh, in the forward passes. In this case now, we take the late start and we subtract one to set up the late finish of each successor. So that will create a late start of 12, end of day 12, for both apply for passport, passport and pack for vacation. Okay, so now we need to uh, calculate our late starts. So we can see for apply for passport, we take 12 minus 10 days plus one. So 12 minus 10 plus one is three. And if we look at pack for vacation, we take 12 minus one plus one is equal to a late start of 12. Okay, now we need to now determine our late uh, finish for book vacation. So again, we will uh, subtract one. We will take the late start of pack for vacation, subtract one to calculate our late finish. 
which is 11. Now again, to calculate the late start for book, vaca book vacation, it will be 11 minus one plus one is equal to 11. Okay, we now just have one more to go. And then, and then we have done our forward and backward past. So one more in our backward past, which is we need to calculate the late finish for select vacation destination. Now, again, here we have, you know, something that's a little tricky again, because we have two uh, successors to choose from. So do we select the three, the late start of three and apply for passport or the late start of 11 in book vacation? Well, the rule is on a backward pass, you take the lesser of the two. So in this case, it's three and you subtract one off and that gives you two. Okay, now one last uh, uh, to calculate the late start for this select vacation destination, uh, two minus two plus one is one. And there, congratulations, we have finished the backward pass. And uh, one way you can tell if you've done everything right is you should be winding up at your late start should be one at, at that at that uh, you know at at this at this point for this for this uh, for this network diagram. So it it works out in this instance. Okay, so um, we now need to the last thing that we're going to calculate is the total float for each activity. And for total float, you take, the, the way you can do it, is you take the late start and subtract from it the early start, um, or you can take the late finish and subtract the early finish. And it's the, the, the result is always the same. Um, so in this case, we could take one minus one for select vacation destination, either one minus one or two minus two. In each case, that gives us zero. Okay, in apply for passport, the same. We have a total float of zero, and that was calculated by three minus three is zero, or 12 minus 12 is zero. That gives us a total float of zero. Uh, if we drop down to book vacation, we have a total float of eight, which is we can see is 11 minus three. Uh, pack for vacation, 12 minus 4, also 8. And finally, depart for vacation, um, 13 minus 13 is 0. Okay, so that uh, is the calculations. This also tells us the critical path. Remember, the critical path is the path that has 0 total float. And you can see that that is the activities that run along the top of the network diagram. So select vacation destination, apply for passport and depart for vacation is the critical path. They all have a total float of zero versus while book vacation and pack for vacation have total float of eight in this. So, so for, for using our calculations. Um, and so that's, that's the way calculations are done. Now, this is on a very simple network diagram, but no matter how large the network diagram is, you keep applying the same process of starting uh, and do your forward pass, working through the activities going forward, and then the backward pass, uh, moving backward through the network diagram, and you can calculate the, uh, the um, uh, critical path. This is the way... Um, uh, software, uh, MS Project, for example, will use the same processing. It'll calculate it automatically, but it's taking the same process. This just shows you very, very um, clearly and methodically how it takes, how the, the, the calculations take place. That's the end of this, uh, of this uh, video lecture on calculating the critical path.